In one of our previous videos, we discussed about load testing. We discussed about what is a load test, why is a load test, and how to do the load test. If you have not watched the video, please check the link in the description. Today in this video, we are going to see about the second type of performance testing that is stress testing. In this video, let us see what is stress testing, why are we doing stress testing and how are we going to do stress test. And also we will compare the load test with the stress test. So once again, I welcome you all to Little Sla YouTube channel and this is me, your Vasant Shanmugam. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos on performance testing and various other performance testing tools and techniques. First, let's start with what is stress testing? Stress testing is a method of introducing the application to extreme load conditions and to check whether it can withstand this huge workload or huge user load. Stress testing measures the stability and the reliability of the software along with its error handling capability and recognizes the limitations of the software. And stress testing plays an important role in identifying where the performance of the application stands with a huge user load under test. So we have so far we have seen what is stress testing. In the section 2, let us see why are we doing stress testing. Any application or any software is highly likely to receive high draft traffic during specific occasions say for example black friday or cyber monday or big billion day or any festival occasions so the system or software will crash when it is not able to handle the unexpected huge volume of requests in the production environment so to forecast all those issues we are performing the stress test in the test or the pre-prod environment and these crash or failure in the production environment or in the live environment will definitely create a negative experience a bad reputation to the brand which definitely result in a loss of revenue which we can clearly say that no single user will return using the application which has a bad quality a bad non-functional quality or a bad function bad reliability so basically this stress testing puts the system through all the unexpected scenarios basically a huge the maximum more than the maximum user load at the testing stage to see how the application works and fixes if there are any issues. So let's now see some of the important reasons for doing stress testing in the pre-prod or in the staging or in the test environment. The first thing would be stress test the application with very high traffic which is more than the maximum and identifying the cause of failure by monitoring the performance during the test using various application monitoring tools observe if there are any memory leaks and any 
issues with the data that is getting saved in the application that is being under test or whether it is getting crashed. Checking for any functional or non-functional errors, any deadlocks or interlock issues that happens in the code or in the functions during stress testing. Looking for any security issues that arises during any functionality failures with a very huge user load that is during the stress test. And check whether the system prints or sends to the log on the proper error messages during the crash or the failure describing about the reason of the crash or the failure and catching the exceptions during the stress test. So far we have seen why are we doing stress test. Let's now see how to perform the stress test. First, stress tests are done in a number of steps starting with preparing the test environment basically following the steps will help us to understand how are we going to do the stress test preparing the test environment preparing the software the hardware the required tools and the network configurations are the vital part in performing the stress test and these has to be identified and the test environment has to be prepared identify the metrics and the criteria for performance acceptance so basically identifying the service level agreement so categorizing and identifying the metrics that will be used to measure the performance of the system under stress so we have to set the success criteria for the system before we do the test step 3 planning and designing the test creating a plan and a design for the stress test and identifying the test case scenarios will play a vital role in the stress testing step 4 configuring the test environment setting up the test environment with the tools along with the required resources for the execution of the plan and making other components available for the test will be the fourth part that is configuring the test environment step 5 implementing the stress test design developing and implementing a stress test design using the best practices in the industry will help to identify the issues that we face during the stress test Step 6. Executing the stress tests. Executing the stress tests and monitoring them along with collecting and validating the test data and results during the stress test. And the last step would be analyzing the results sharing the results of the stress test for basically for a particular scenario and the configuration is accepted to be complete when all the metrics are within the acceptable limits there are no thresholds that are violated and all the data has been collected will be the last step and let's now see what should the performance tester should collect during the load test or to monitor during the stress test so monitoring the behavior of the system when maximum number of users have concurrently logged in and checking how the system handles multiple logins so this will help us to identify the various or the robustness of the software and the second thing would be 
setting the system's response when all the users are performing critical operations simultaneously. The third reason would be identifying the system's issues when the same file or the data is being used by all the users. And the final reason would be understanding whether the database server or the server will get crash during the stress test that happens because of a maximum number of user load that is beyond the limit. So let's now see the metrics that we have to collect at the end of the stress test. We have to collect the following five metrics. So let's see them one by one. Metric number one, average transaction response time, which is the average time taken by the application to perform transactions. Second metric would be total transactions per second, which is the number of transactions that are passed, failed or stopped during the stress test. This also helps us to understand the throughput during the stress test. The third metric will be response time, which is the total time taken to send and receive a response to the request under stress test or the maximum load. The fourth metric would be error rate. This error rate will tell us the percentage of all the requests that are sent that are result in an error during the stress test. So identifying the error and what type of error will help us to fix the issues before it moves to production. The fifth metric would be hits per second, which which is the number of HTTP requests that were sent by the users to the server every second or per second. So these are one of the few metrics that we collect during stress testing. Let's now conclude and do a small recap on why do we do stress testing. Stress testing is a subdivision under performance testing and forms an essential process while determining the usability and the user experience aspect of any particular system or software. So this stress test helps us to determine how the system behaves under extreme load conditions and the maximum number of concurrent users or throughput that the system can handle and identifying the breaking point and the failure mode and check whether the system can recover after it fails without any intervention during the stress test. It not only tests the performance of the system, but also its ability to revert to its normal stage. Let's now see the differences between load test and stress test. Load test is done to verify the performance of the system under an expected load. On the other hand, stress test is done to understand or to find the breaking point of the system with more than the maximum user load. Load test is done to check the response time of the server for the expected specific load. So the goal is to check the response time. On the other hand, stress testing is done to find whether the system will behave as expected if the load goes beyond the normal limit. Load test checks average response time, throughput, the pass and the failures.
Stress test, on the other hand, checks for memory leaks, security threats, and any deadlocks that happen during stress testing. Load test checks the reliability of the system. On the other hand, stress test checks the stability of the application. Since both of them are non-functional requirement, they have their own objective during testing. Load testing is done with a maximum number of users requests per second. On the other hand, stress testing is done with more than the maximum possible number of users uh, requests. With that, we have concluded the video on stress testing. Thanks everyone for watching the video. We will meet with more other information videos in our upcoming sessions. Thanks everyone for watching.